If you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel. When you do, make sure you hit the notification bell. That means that you will be informed of when a new video has been released. If you would like to take that support one step further, you can do that via Patreon, which is an optional monthly service you can donate money towards the channel. Or you can go over to Kofi. Dot com and for the price of a coffee you can help donate towards the channel as well links for all of those will be in the description of the video and without further ado enjoy the video Kyle let's let's go and talk about your time in football I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated to hear um, <laughs> your your career what what you know how you've got to where you are at the moment um let's go right back to the beginning um before you joined norwich what was your career you know what was your footballing journey like to that point where were you playing before the norwich move came before around norwich um i was just playing you know in my local hometown um a place called remelton uh the team was called swilly rovers um you know, it was just, it was the only kind of, it was only only team in that town, um, you know, so I, I think I only started playing football, maybe I was under 10s. Right. And, um, and then, you know, just, you know, my mum and dad just brought me to every training session, you know, every game, you know, my dad was involved at their age, uh, managing, mm -hmm. coaching, um, just kind of worked, worked my way up, you know. As, as best as I could, you know, I got into like, I was playing senior football at 14, 15. Um, wow. Because I, I was quite big, you know, I was tall. Yeah. Um, And, you know, the standard and like, it's like a Sunday league, you know, pub league, you know, as long as you can head it and kick it, you're a baller sort of thing. <laughs> 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 so, worked my way up there, yeah, at 14. And then you go into like a county section. So, the county I'm from is Donegal. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then you get picked for like your county team. Um, so that started under twelves, I think maybe under twelves. Yeah, and then right. you go to like all Ireland tournaments around Ireland. You know, you play your Dublin's, your Sligo's. You know, all the counties. Mm. And there's a big, there's a big tournament. There's two big tournaments called. There's one called the Galway Cup, and there's one called the Kennedy Cup. And I was representing my county there, and I had two good tournaments. Um. And then the scouts started approaching my dad and, you know, kept getting more and more interest. Um, and, you know, spoke to a few people and they kind of said, you know, and, until the clubs, like, contact you over the phone and have flights booked, like, don't really get your hopes up. Right. So that was grand. So, you know, um, coach, scouts kept coming up to my dad and all these tournaments or whatever. He was chatting to them, yeah, no problem, blah, blah, blah. Here's my number. And mm. we did hear from a few, you know, I went, so then we went to, before I went on my trials, um, we, I got called up to the Irish under 15s, um, yeah. that was where, where I started then, my Irish football, my first trip away, I think we went to Qatar. Oh, wow. We, yeah, yeah. At that we, age, that must have been so exciting. Yeah, oh yeah, it was, it was, like, it was mental, it was crazy. Yeah, I know at any age that would be exciting, but yeah, what, so, what was that like when you got the call to say that's what's going to be happening? So yeah, it was it was a bit mad. Like I was obviously I'm 14 at the time and still in school or whatever. And you know, someone says, "Are oh, you going to guitar?" And I'm thinking, "Where the hell is this place?" <laughs> so <laughs> locked it up and all, and locked up where we were staying and where we we're going. And I was like, "Jesus, this place is unbelievable." So it's a place called the Aspire Academy. I'm not sure if you heard of it. It's no, like I, it's, it's, about... I can't even explain it. Like it's got three or four basketball courts five or six football pitches, swimming pools, everything, like, so I went over there anyway for a week, um, came back from there, um, and then I started going on my trials, my first, my first trial, I think I went to, it was Aston Villa, yeah, I went to Aston Villa for two weeks, um, that was good, it was a good experience, you know, felt, it was a bit tough at the start, because it was a completely different standard to what you're used to, sure, back, back in Ireland, you know, Sunday League football, going into academy football. Yeah. And then I went to Falkirk in Scotland yeah. for, for a few weeks. Uh, they wanted to sign me. Um, I went to Leicester. 
Yeah, so it goes to Black Blackburn. They offered me a deal as well. Um, who else? And then I went to Norwich. Yeah, I went to Norwich, and then yeah, I went into Norwich for a week. Played a uh, played a game there. Um, Gary Holt and Ricky Martin and Neil Adams were the yeah. three over. Or Neil Adams and Gary Holt were the were the two that were over the under 16s at the time. Yeah, yeah. And Ricky Martin was the academy manager. Yeah. And um, we played uh, we played Aston Villa in a friend in a yeah, in a friendly at uh, uh, the training ground in Norwich. And, yeah. Um, yeah. After that, there you know I went home for a while and then Ricky gave my dad a call and said, you know we want to take Kyle out to um, out to Guernsey for a tournament. Okay. So we yeah. went out to Guernsey and we played three games out there. Can't remember the teams now we played against. Um, but yeah, I played three games out there and then Ricky offered me a deal um, there and then. So we grabbed it with both hands because uh, I felt Norwich reminded me a lot of home as well. You know, well, um, well, one of the things that Norwich are actually quite good at, we, we have brought over a lot of players from Ireland to be part of the part of the academy setup. Um, yeah. You know, one one player that's currently in there at the moment is Simon Power. You know, yeah. he's he's still in and around that setup. Is that something that was that a, was that a big factor for deciding to join Norwich? You know, at the time, or what, I'm just kind of curious. You had those offers from Falkirk. You had you know you had the offer um, from Blackburn. Were were these all at the same time as the Norwich trials, or were they kind of all staggered? And is there any reason why you decided not to go to those 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 clubs as well? Um, yeah, they were, they were they were all similar times, you know. I think all the the all the trials happened within a year, um, and all the deals were there with, within a year. And you know, my dad said okay. to every club, um, he's not um, he's not going to make a decision until he's done his exams. Uh, so every cl- okay. every club knew what what how long they had to wait for before an answer. Okay, that's, um, that's... <laughs> so. Yeah, I had time on my side there anyway, but went to Norwich and I just loved it. The people there. The people at the club were brilliant. You know, Colin Watts um, was the one who brought me over, and he was top. I think he could still be involved somewhere at Norwich, but he was. I he think was he top is, yeah. class. Um, and the lads as well were 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 brilliant lads. So yeah, I just clicked clicked with the boys and clicked with the people in the club straight away. And um, yeah, that was you know it was the right decision to sign there, hundred percent. Definitely, definitely. Um, sorry, Adam, did you want to? No, no, no. Sorry, I thought I heard, thought I heard you ask it before you were about to jump in with something. Now. No, no. Like I was just, just like pretty fascinated to hear how like getting picked up, moving on to <clears throat> making making that choice. Like at, at a young age, I think uh, it always fascinates me to know how people can make that choice. And I think that, I think what, what is quite impressive for me is the fact that your your dad was so. You know, he he made that. You know, he's not doing anything until he sorted out his exams. That that for me is very. Yeah. I'm, I'm very impressed with that. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I left school at sixteen, and, I, and then I, that was it. I was, I was straight into full time football. Yeah. And so, was... so then making that move over to Norwich. Talk to me about your your feelings at the time when you were going over there. Is it just? Is it just excitement? Are you, you know, are you nervous? What, what, what are you feeling at that point? This is obviously this is then your first full time part of an, you know, part of an academy yeah. set. I think, um, you know, when I got offered the deal, um, I think it might have been like six months say before I, I moved over. Okay. When you get offered the deal, you know, you sign it, you scan it all back or whatever, and then you know you're buzzing, you know, you're top of the world, run around to your families, you know, oh, I'm saying Norris, blah blah blah, <laughs> you know. And then you know, as time gets closer, you know, maybe a week before you're going over, you're you're a bag of nerves. You're like, yeah, you know, that's me done. Like I'm I'm leaving Ireland. You know, <laughs> like what what's going to happen now? I'm going over to Norwich, sort of thing. Um, don't know anyone. Sort of sort of thing that there, but that's that's what I mean by the players and and the staff were brilliant with me coming over. And they really helped me settle in. And if I was ever struggling, like missing home or anything, you know, they'd they always had the phone on or, you know, they'd always look after me. And I mean, they got me an Xbox and a PlayStation and everything to make me feel at home. So right. they, they were, they were top class at, at dealing with players coming in from abroad. So, yeah. but yeah, it was, I was definitely a bag of nerves moving over. I'm, I'm just, I'm just curious to kind of find out, especially at that age, um, 
from an accommodation perspective, how, how does that work in an academy when you are moving over from a different country? Do the club kind of set you up with something? Is that kind of where, you know, where we have like a club liaison who's, you know, who helps you out with that side of things? What was yeah. the situation with that? They're, um, so they put you in digs um, and then the club kind of digs a liaison officer at the time. Um, he kind of looked after the scholars. It was right. Jimmy Unwin. He's now a coach at Cambridge United. He was... Yeah. He was brilliant with me, you know, if I ever, you know, felt homesick, he was the first person I go to if I need flights home. He yeah. was the first man I go to and he'd sort of flights out or, you know, take me out for a coffee or something just to, you know, take my mind off missing home. But, um, mm. you know, he put me in, <clears throat> he put me in a good digs. Um, there was uh, four, there was me and three other players. Um, there was a guy called Matt Ball who, he played with Northern Irish underage teams or whatever you know and um obviously from him knowing boys from ireland it kind of helped him settle me in a bit yeah you know he was he was a pro at the time a young pro i think he might have been a first year pro or a second year pro so um and then there was richard brindley as well i think he's at notch county now right um so them two boys looked after me massively because they were older and they knew i'd moved over from ireland and you know, they'd obviously moved up from wherever it had been, London or whatever. But um, mm. it's a bit of a difference coming up from London than Ireland. But, uh, yeah, they definitely helped me settle in. Then there was another guy, Joe Peacock, who was there, who was from Cambridge. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was spent, you know, just four lads and we clicked. You know, we, we had a good laugh. And the Diggs people there was Don and John Wood, who were, they were older, but they were brilliant for me, you know. They just gave us the run of the house and said, you know, Go in and use the telly, go in and eat what you want, do what you want, you know, make yourself at home. So, yeah, it was, it was right. the right things to put me in at the time. Definitely. Um, and, you know, throughout the time before the um, before the FA Youth Cup season, before that campaign, you're still representing um, Ireland at a, at a youth level at this point. Does that, does that kind of thing then help to be still selected for that? So you are then given the opportunity to then come back home as well? Um you know, to, to, to represent your country, does that, does that have a major factor in, you know, you settling into a place? Yeah, big time. You know, it's always, it's always, you know, brilliant to represent your country. You know, you'd be buzzing when the club pull you in and say, like, look, you, you've been called up for the 18s, 19s, 21s, whatever it may be. Mm. You know, you're delighted that that, but then in the back of your mind, you're thinking, right, I might get two days at home to see my mum and dad or my, my little brother and stuff like that there. Yeah. <clears throat> but the club always, like, if my training camp started on a Monday or a Tuesday, if we played a game on a Saturday in uh, Clooney at the, at the training ground, mm. you know, they'd let me fly home Saturday after the match. So I'd get two or three days at home and then I'd head to like Dublin for the training camp. And oh. then they might give me a day or two at home then after the training camp and I could fly home. So, so yeah, they definitely looked after me in that sense that I could get home and see my family and stuff. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. So, <laughs> When you are in the when you are in the youth team, as you're going up through um, through the the kind of ages there, who who are your managers? Um, obviously, we know um, Neil Adams was the manager for that particular season. Um, but but who who were your managers as you were going up through that, or was Neil your always your your kind of gaffer at that point? Um, so yeah, when I first moved over, it was Neil and Gary Holt. Yeah. Um, what a legend! They were brilliant. Them two were brilliant. Um, you know, as I said in that interview I done before, Neil Neil's Neil's one of the best I've worked under. He was he was class. Um, then when we went up, obviously we won the youth cup and ever. You know, um, then went up to twenty ones, and then there was a few managers who went to twenty ones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mark, <there> was. <laughs> Mark Robson. Um, Mark Robson. I think he could be involved with the English FA somewhere now. Then we had um, Dale Brooks. Yeah. Dale, Dale Brooks, Paul Wilkinson. Dale Brooks is actually at Stowe Market now. Oh, is he? Yeah, the yeah, club that I work at. Is he really? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's that Brooksy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow, there you go. Dale Brooks, yeah. Um, and Paul Wilkinson was another one. Mm. I, I think that was it now. I hope I haven't missed anyone out. Yeah, no, that's just a fair show. But yeah, so, Neil, Neil was the one who gave me my, my debut at Norwich, so. Yeah, he was he was top class. Yeah, so let let's con- let's let's move on to that to that famous season with the FA Youth Cup. 
when you when you are involved at that you know at that time when you're in the early rounds does anyone ever mention about how far the club can go is this like the number one priority in an academy the youth cup or you know how does it work are you mainly concentrating on the league perspective like talk me talk me through that before we kind of go through the actual run itself you know i think it's always good to do well in the league but when the youth cup comes around you know there's always that excitement um i know we definitely put the league like to bed like we we were done with the league when we were started to do well in the youth cup um <laughs> brilliant stuff um, uh, so yeah, leading up to youth cup, I think you know there's an excitement. Um, but I don't think I actually I speak for all the lads. I don't think we ever thought we'd we'd go on to win it. To be honest, mm. I think it was after we played QPR in the first game, <clears throat> and I think we played Millwall and then Everton. I think, mm-hmm. and then it was after Everton when Big Carton Morris banged in a hat trick. Yeah, we were all looking at each other, thinking, Jesus, like we have a right chance here, like. <laughs> you know, let's give it a right go. So, um, yeah, it was after the Everton game then where the league just went out the window. You know, we did, didn't kick a ball in any league games at all. Right. Um, But, yeah, no, there's there's definitely an excitement. And then, you know, after that game, it just clicked and we went on to win the whole thing. It was crazy. Like, So, at, at, at the time when you are going through... Um... Through the rounds, are the, are the lads talking about... Is, is the excitement kind of getting... You know what? What is it like when you are going through that? Are you are you all talking about it? Is it something that you then that the confidence is then building as each kind of round goes on, or are the managers kind of like grounding you out and just you know putting you you know take you know calming things down? Yeah, you know Neil and Gary were very calming figures. Um, you know after we played QPR, you know good result there. The, the crowds then maybe started to get a little bit bigger each round. Mm. <clears throat> so. Well, that, that's when we all started to get excited then, you know, seeing more and more faces come in to the ground and stuff. Um, yeah. But as I said, after we beat Everton, then we just knew, like, I think we had Nottingham Forest then, I think, in the next round yeah. at home. And, and Carroll Road, I remember it was packed. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was definitely that, that after that Everton game, then, you know, we probably did start getting excited, you know, when we were, we were thinking, like, you know, we could go on to win this and what if we do win it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was it was it was a good journey. Yeah, that that first that first time playing in front of a crowd like that before you even get to the finals side of things, when you are at Carrow Road with a crowd of that size, what is that feeling like as a youngster that a club has put that much emphasis into its youth and has shown that much support? What was that? What was that feeling like? That was mad. I was I was nerve wracking to be fair walking out. Um, yeah, I think we walked, I think against Nottingham Forest, you obviously walk out the tunnel, I think the majority of the crowd were behind us. Yeah. So, as we walked out, you know, we didn't really see, you've seen a fair bit in the, in the big stand as you walk out, but then you turn around to line up and do the handshakes, and you're like, Jesus, like, look at the mountain I'm here. Mm. So then it hits you and you're like, look, there's no turning back now sort of thing. Yeah. So uh, we had a right go, and then, um, yeah, I think it was, it was the penalties at Carroll Road, or it went to penalties, didn't it? I think it did, yeah. I think yeah. it did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember Dave McCramp I'd seen that game. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, it was it was brilliant. Yeah, the fan the couldn't believe the fans. Like I knew the fans were brilliant for the first team every week, you know, win, lose or draw. Yeah. Um, but they definitely came out in their numbers, you know, against Nottingham Forest and then against Chelsea in the final. It was sold out yeah. stadium or something crazy like that. Yeah. So when let let's let's move on to the final. When you when you are playing against Chelsea and the, the you know that their youth their youth teams is is famous now, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. Youth, the youth setup that they have at the moment is just absolutely ridiculous with with the talent that they've got. And I'm, I'll just read out a few of these names for you, especially for you, Adam. They had Christensen in the side, who is now still there playing in their first team. Uh, Baker, Swift, Loftus Cheek. Kawamia, they had, you know, <laughs> Roos up top. They had some brilliant players yeah. in Nathan that team. Yeah, there as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I don't think he played, though. Did he even play the final, I don't think? I don't think he did. No, not from what, I could, not from what I've done in my research. I don't think he was um, He was playing. But when, when you're going up against, the, against a team like that, are you not in the build-up? Are you not really thinking about that? Are you just kind of so much on a high that... You just feel like you can take on anyone. 
I think yeah, we were we were obviously you know we were we knew the talent them guys had. Um, like I think someone going into the final, someone said like how much their team was worth or something crazy like that there. So um, I was just kind of thinking like, look, they're obviously going to be decent players, so I might as well just try to get a good kick at them if I can, sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I had a few kicks, all right, but uh, like, look, we we just we knew we had the ability in our or um our, our squad to go and to go and turn over anyone. And as I said after the Everton game, you know, we were full of confidence. Yeah. Um, you know, we just. We did, we mightn't have played much ball against Chelsea, but you know we we definitely outworked them and and you know outfought them and you know bullied them all over the park. You know, yeah. I think we probably probably sh- shaked them up early on, um, so they didn't know how to deal with us. We were just nitty gritty, you know, kicking them of them and it worked. <laughs> we went on to win it then. Yeah. So in that in that first leg, twenty two thousand fans at Carroll Road. The, the number of people coming up to watch it just up to another level. That must be an amazing experience for for yeah. somebody at somebody at a young age, right? Definitely, yeah. And to know that they were all there for us, um, you know, that definitely helped. Uh, and I think, you know, obviously maybe a few of them are there to see, you know, Chelsea, you know, unbelievable youth team in that. But mm. um, just to almost sell out Carroll Road for for a youth a youth cup game was just incredible and then to go on and win it was even better like yeah and then that 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 the return leg at Chelsea you know you're you're going into that with a one nil lead from the first leg three thousand Norwich fans travel oh. down to London to come and watch you again that again that, that is just that's just mental isn't it really when you think about it yeah it was mad and I think they definitely they definitely outshone the um the Chelsea ones anyway I remember that there that's yeah. the take away from that game they never stopped um my parents and my uncles actually flew over for that there and I managed to get uh, the Donegal flag, the county I'm in, the county I'm from, I managed to get them to throw the flag down and I had it wrapped around my neck for when we won nice. the celebration. <laughs> so uh, everyone at home was happy with that there anyway. But um, yeah, I mean, the fans at Norwich are, are incredible and, and they still are. Like they, mm. they never have a bad thing to say about the club, you know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, when that final whistle goes and you have won it, when you think about all the all the players that have won it in the past, the, the successful youth teams that have come out of that, what you know, what are you, what are you thinking at that point in terms of your own career? Um, it must be a huge like turning point, like knowing, like, like you say, James, like for your own career, how big is that? Yeah, at that age, it's like obviously at youth age, it's massive, you know. Yeah. Chelsea like won it for numerous years before that. I think that was our first win in like thirty years or something. Norwich's first win. Mm. So to be part of that there to almost be like history is is brilliant. Like and then obviously after like the final whistle goes, you know, you're not really thinking about what, what's gonna happen next. You're just absolutely buzzing on the pitch, running around like mad. <laughs> um but uh yeah, you know, days and weeks go by after and you're thinking, you know, this you know, it's a good thing to have behind you, you know. A few of us got offered new deals after that. Um Yeah. To stay on for a year or two after. Um, but yeah, it's just it's it's brilliant to be part of, you know, and the the squad who I was with as well at the time were just absolutely brilliant. You know, all the lads were were brilliant. You know, you can see a lot of them have gone on to do amazing things as well. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, at the at the end of that season, then after the after the team have had that much success, um, the club are still in the Premier League at this point. They've had two seasons in the league. They're then entering in their third third season. What kind of conversations are had with the youth team about what's going to be happening for the next step? Um, I, I, is that kind of thing talked about as a team perspective? Did you have like an individual conversation to say, right, now that we've had this success, this is kind of like our our plan and our pathway for you to get in to the first team? How how does that kind of develop? Yeah, I mean, you don't they don't have it as a team sort of talk. I mean, you have your your individual talks with your managers, your coaches, mm-hmm. whatever. You know, you're, you're pulled in and, um, you know, I talk you through, like, where they're going to, like, keep you here for your development. Are we going to send you on loan? Or, right. you know, we're going to keep you training with first team or 21s or whatever. You know, they've all got a plan set out for you. And, um, yeah, you know, it's just up to you to, to execute the plan, I suppose. Um, okay. 
but then stuff happens, you know, new managers comes in, you know, managers have different tactics. They might not like younger players coming through, you know, right. stuff like that, you know. But everything happens for a reason, you know, and, and you know, I love my time at Norwich there and I still have a lot of time for the club. Yeah. So yeah. there's exactly. a lot of hard work, obviously, that goes into what you've done. I think like that's really evident from what you've just said there. Like when you started to realise the sort of traction you were getting in that cup, like all eyes went on to it, hard work, out-muscled Chelsea. But there is an element of luck as well, isn't there, in furthering your career as well? Like you've just gone on to say about managers coming in and people then going through it's like what they like and what they want. You may be signed one minute, I guess, because you're the right fit for that strategy. But does it worry you that that strategy can always change in an instant? Um, yeah, I know what you mean there. I mean, it, it worried me. It would have worried me like when I was younger. Uh, yeah. You know, when you're talking about contracts with managers and then one manager comes in and that's it, you're out the window sort of thing. But yeah. Yeah. now as I'm older and wiser, you know, you know, I can sort of deal with it a bit better. I'm, thankfully, I've been here at Sligo, you know, for four years now. Yeah. Um, so I haven't had to worry about that for a long time. But, uh, yeah, you know, football is definitely very cutthroat and you have to be mentally strong to deal with it. And, um, you know, at Norwich, we had psychologists in all the time, you know, okay. talking about stuff like that and, and working on your game and, you know, working on your confidence on and off the pitch and stuff like that. So, yeah, that, that definitely helped as well when you're, when you're almost told that's it, like you're not getting a contract, it's up to you to wherever you go next sort of thing. Yeah. I just want to kind of refresh... Um, Norwich fans who are listening to this, their their memories on this. We, you know, we'd had our second season. We'd finish our second season in the Premier League. We were then at that point where we had Chris Hutton as the manager, and during that summer was when we tried to then sign a lot of players to try and take us on to the next level. So we were signing people like Javier Garrido, Redmond came in, Martin Olsen came in, Leroy Fur. Obviously, then the famous Ricky Van Walswinkle came in. <laughs> we, we tried. We tried to then. We tried to elevate our club to the next level. And we tried to establish ourselves as a Premier League side. Yeah. So, as a youth team player, after you've just had that successful season, you're seeing these kind of signings coming in. You, you mentioned about having the individual chat. Was there was there any options to be able to go out on loan? Did you see that as? as something as a viable option or was that, you know, did you, did, did you want to kind of knuckle down and see what you could do during that season at the club? Yeah. I mean, you know, once you're at the club before any talks about loan, you know, comes around, you're just, you know, working as hard as you can at the club, you know, trying to catch the eye of anyone at all, doing the best right. you can in games. But, um, you know, I remember, I think it was the year before I met a got. I might have got released. I think Carlisle came in to take me on loan. Well, it's right. both my agent at the time, and I remember thinking, like, before training, you know, oh, happy days, you know, go out and get some league football and league two, yeah. get a few games on my belt. And then that day in training, I remember going into a tackle or something stupid like that there, and a twig ligament to my knee. Oh. Oh. So that's got typical, you know. So it was only out for about two or three weeks, but then... You know, my agent then went on to Carlisle and he's like saying, look, they need someone like now. So, right. That came about the window. So, but look, you know, it's just it's luck sometimes. Um, and just at that time, luck wasn't on my side, but pick yourself up and go again, don't you? No point sul- sulking about it. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, no, definitely. I'm just kind of curious. You know, we, we've had a number of people on who have said that, you know, they were they were very keen to go out and get first team football like at any point sort of opportunity so it's just really to kind of get your thoughts on where you you know where you were at um sort of back then but the the club had a very difficult season um we ended up getting relegated that that particular season yeah. but um you know Neil Adams came in as <clears throat> as manager at that point did you then think I hear somebody who knows me he's managed me yeah knows my game during that summer, um, I believe that you actually you you made a couple of appearances and you actually played yeah. the League Cup, didn't you, against Crawley? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, um, yeah. When Neil got the gig, you know, I think there was a buzz around all the young all the young players, um, you know, because he he had us for two years and brought us to youth, won the youth, youth cup with us, like, mm. so he knew us inside out better than anyone. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think it was. Uh, we played Nice in a, in a friendly, 
yeah. Car Road, I think, and then I, he chucked me on the second half for about 20, 25 minutes. And uh, I remember I was a bag of nerves. I had no clue what was going on. <laughs> I remember him turning around to the bench and I was almost trying to hide. They said, like, don't pick me. Like, um, <laughs> But then, no, I was glad he threw me in because... And um, because, you know, I got, a, I got a taste for it then, you know. Yeah. Um, playing with, even though it wasn't really 20 minutes, you know, playing with, I think Russell Martin might have been playing right back. Or, uh, yeah, Russell Martin was right back. And I think Ryan Bennett was was left centre back beside me. Right. So, you know, playing with players like that there was bring you on leaps and bounds. But then yeah. I remember then the weeks the weeks after that, you know, I was up training with the first team a few times. Um you know, getting getting used to the pace and all, you know, it's because it's a massive jump from the 21s to the first team. The pace is a joke. Of course. So, and then, I think it was a cup game then against Crawley. Uh, yeah. Mark, Robin, Mark Robson was Neil Adams' assistant at the time. Mm. And uh, I had a good relationship with Mark, a very good relationship. He was the 21s manager at one point as well. So, that's another reason when Neil got the gig that Mark was his assistant. And I, you know, you get the bit between your teeth and you think, right, these people know me, so you yeah. work even harder almost. And then yeah. he pulled me in the office and he started showing me clips of uh, the Crawley striker, I think it was McLeod, McLeod or whatever his name was, the striker. It's and, not, uh, it's not either Eyes or McLeod or that's him. McLean. That's it's, him, yeah. Um, yeah. So he pulled yeah. me in the office anyway and he's put up this big like, white screen and he's showing me all these clips. <laughs> and I'm sitting here watching this and and before I leave the office, I remember him saying to me, going, um, uh, you know, I'm just showing you these. And he was like, look, you might not be starting at all. And I'm thinking, Jesus, surely I'm starting now from after watching half an hour clips of the striker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so started and played the full 90. Yeah. And uh, we won, I think we won 2-1 or something like that. Yeah, we did. Yeah, free one, I think it was. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. yeah. And I remember playing as well. The two twins were on the wings. Yeah. Josh and Jacob were on the wings. And, I don't know if any of the other lads. I think Reese Hall Johnson might have come off the bench. Yeah. And I remember thinking like that, you know, it's just mad what a, what a change a manager does. You know, the young boys get a chance. But saying that, Josh and Jacob were flying anyway after the Youth Cup. I think they got a sniff of the first team straight away. Yeah, they did, Because yeah. they, were, they were a joke during that Youth Cup. But um, to see like Reese come off the bench and all, you know, it's mad what a change a manager can do, especially when they work with the young players. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. No, it was, it was brilliant. Neil, Neil was Neil's top class. And then during the course of that season, um, Neil uh, Neil Adams actually started off that season quite well. I think people forget yeah. that um, he he's the the campaign started off quite well, but more towards kind of November sort of time, it but it started to slip and uh, ever so slightly, and we were kind of dropping out of the playoffs. And obviously, he made the decision, which he said at the time was for the good of the club. For him to to step down, Alex Neal comes in as manager. Mm-hmm. The second half of the season was it was all about getting promoted. The whole club was just promotion, promotion, promotion. We have to get promoted for the sake of finances of the whole club. It was yeah. all kind of systems go. Obviously, we have the day at Wembley, the best day of my life, other than yeah. obviously day of uh, day of my son being born and obviously the wedding day. Oh, just in case of the missus kind of. Ch- uh, as a girl, me for saying that, <laughs> uh, simply, yeah, best day of my life that day. But from you, 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 you were then released at the end of that season. Yeah. Um, the conversation was that was that done by Alex or was that done by somebody else at the club? And kind of talk me through your feelings and emotions at the time. Did you did you expect it, or were you were you really disappointed and wanted a, another chance to kind of prove what you could do? Yeah, sure. That was a strange one because actually. Like, when Neil, when the club were doing well, like after I made that appearance for the first team, you know, I was in, I was in a lot of the squads. Like I was traveling to away games and coming to home games. You know, I was, I was in the whatever thirty man squad it was. Yeah. So like I was going to a lot of the games, and um, I remember then like reading the news one morning or something like that. There's someone putting the text in the group chat saying Neil Adams has left Norwich or resigned or whatever. And I remember thinking, oh Jesus, who's going to come in now? Like. <laughs> so I seen Alex Neil come in and um, like he he just how how many games did he have? Did he have like half a season or something? Or I think he joined maybe the beginning of January. I can't remember. His, I know his first game was against Bournemouth, and we went right. down to ten men, and we we somehow managed to win that game. I'm just going to try and find it if I can. Yeah. But yeah, he um I think he had just under half a season. That's right. Yeah. So there was so yeah, it was doing well under Neil. Like it was playing whatever. 
doing playing well for twenty threes, you know, I was in around the first team. Um and then I seen that he got sacked and I thought, right, who's coming in? Seen Alex Neal come in, didn't know anything about him. Um <laughs> no one did. <laughs> no, no one did. nothing about him. Um <laughs> but uh yeah, he just kinda he didn't really say much to the young boys, you know. Not a lot of us got up training with him then when he came in. Right. So um you know, we were kinda left in limbo, didn't really really know whether it was coming or going, you know, I'd, this is coming to the end of my contract, and then yeah. Alex and Ricky Martin pulled me into the office just to tell me about the contract and like what what they said was really like we need players who's going to get us promoted, like you know, almost like experienced heads to get us back up to the Premier League. Yeah, they really said, look, we're going to have to we're going to have to let you go. But Alex Neil said, look, Hamilton wants you. You know, I'm going to send you up to Hamilton if you want to go up there and check the place out and stuff. So. That sorry, was, was this was this a permanent? Sorry, at the end of your contract, that Hamilton wanted you. Sorry, or I'm not really contract? sure if it if it was, well, I hadn't agreed nothing, and like my agent hadn't agreed nothing. You know, they just sent me up there for a few days to have a look around the place. You know, to play yeah. match or whatever, and then talks would start. So, yeah, but then as I was leaving Hamilton, uh, Orlando got on the phone. And I said, "Book me the next flight." 